make a short little video um, about what it looks like when you get an update for your Tesla Model 3. So when you get in your car um, in the morning, if your car is connected to Wi-Fi at your house, it will automatically do these updates. However, if your sentry mode is on in your car at home, your updates will not automatically update overnight if sentry mode is turned on. So if it tells you that there is an update coming, then um, I found out because it said there's an update available, but it was not able to download because sentry mode was on at my house, which is where it normally downloads. Before, a few weeks ago, when I first got the car, it did the first download on its own because I didn't have a USB drive yet, so I wasn't using sentry mode. So uh, the first time it just happened automatically so with this one, when it told me that and it prompted saying that there was one available and it couldn't do it because sentry mode was on at my house, I turned sentry mode off today and I went ahead and um, started the download from my phone actually in my Tesla app. Or you can go into the screen in your Tesla and you can go ahead and start the download. I just turned sentry mode off for a little bit just to do this download and then I'll turn sentry mode back on. But here is what the latest update is. It is October 24th, so this is the latest update. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, read this to you guys. So I know my screen is not perfect. I did switch back to filming with my um, iPhone 11 Pro Max. I, end up, I ended up returning my Sony ZV-1 because the battery was just was so terrible in it. First, speed assist improvements. In addition to local roads, speed assist now leverages your car's cameras to detect speed limit signs to improve the accuracy of speed limit data for highways. As usual, to adjust speed assist settings, tap controls, autopilot, speed limit. Um, I think this is really great because basically, I can't show you guys because I'm in park at my house, but whenever I'm driving on the highway, it will actually show a speed limit sign right here, and it looks exactly like a speed limit sign. It's a little rectangle, it says speed limit, and then it has the speed limit number. Over here will be another number, and that's what you're setting your autopilot or cruise control to drive at. And then right here, it will show the actual speed that your car is going. So I have mine to where I like to speed only five miles over whatever the speed limit is. So if I have 65 as the speed limit that the car is recognizing on speed limit signs, my car will go 70 miles per hour. If there is a car in front of me that's only doing 63 miles per hour, my car is only gonna go as fast as the car in front of me. It's not gonna run into the back of that car. So I really I really like that. I've already been using it. Um, priority Bluetooth device. To avoid connecting to the wrong nearby phone, you can now set your priority Bluetooth device. Your car will attempt to connect to the priority device associated with the pri profile selected before it attempts to connect to other paired phones. To set your priority device, Tap the blue tooth icon on the top of your touch screen, select your preferred phone and tap priority device. So I will be doing that with my cell phone. Currently my cell phone is the only one that is connected to the car. Glove box pin, protect the valuables in your glove box with a four digit pin. Tap controls, safety and security, glove box pin on the touch screen to create your pin. This is really great because when I first saw this, I didn't really think that it was a big deal. I'm like, whatever, I don't want people getting in my car anyway. If they get in my car, fine, they can have access to anything. Then I realized I have my CHL license. Sometimes I carry my gun with me. Um, I also have six children. I don't want my kids to have access to something like that. So it's nice that I can put... Um, 
my self-defense weapon, whatever that may be, in my glove box. And then I can set a pin number so that my kids can't just go to controls, you know, if I leave my teenagers in the car or something while I'm in the store, which I've never done, but I mean, they're old enough. I probably will start doing that in the near future. But if I want to leave my gun in the glove box and I want to make sure my kids can't just hit glove box open and get to it, I can put a pin number on my glove box. So that's super nice. Also, the same thing with valet. If I pull up and have a valet park my car, I can lock my glove box. They can get in my car, but they can't get into my glove box. So this is actually really, really useful and I definitely will be taking advantage of the glove box pin. Charge port inlet heater. Your car can now use the charge port inlet heater to help defrost the inside of the charge port. The charge port inlet heater can be activated in cold ambient temperatures by enabling preconditioning using the mobile app, activating the rear defrost button on the vehicle's touchscreen, or preconditioning the vehicle using scheduled departure. Um, this release contains minor improvements and bug fi fixes. So, I probably will not be using that. I live in southeast Texas. It does not freeze here. However, if you are somewhere like Canada or somewhere up north or something like that and it snows and it freezes and all those things, I can see how this would really be beneficial to you. Uh, personally to me, it doesn't really matter at all. Cruise set speed improvements. Quickly adjust the traffic aware cruise control or auto steer set speed to the current speed by simply tapping the cluster speedometer. This is going to be your cluster speedometer over here. You can still tap the speed limit sign to adjust the set speed to the speed limit. So if you're driving along and you want to quickly um, set it to the speed limit, whatever that may be, um, I believe this is kind of like, <laughs> let's say you're speeding, right? And you see a speed trap ahead. Personally, I just scroll this down real quick, um, but sometimes it doesn't go enough or it goes too low. So then I slow down from, you know, 70, 75 down to 60 by accident. Because if you slow by, if you go, if you scroll by one click, it goes down by one mile per hour. So 62 to 61 to 60. But if you scroll real fast like that, it will go from, it will go in five mile per hour increments. So that's actually really nice that you can just tap the speed limit sign real quick and it will slow you down to exactly the speed limit, not below and not above. That's actually really convenient, especially if you're a speed demon. So that's all I have for you guys today. I just want to show what the um, updates look like when you get in your car and you're like, oh, I have a new update. So that's the latest update for the Tesla Model 3. Um, if you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video or if it was helpful to you, please like and subscribe. See you guys next time.